Welcome back to our interview series, Get to Know Him, where we get to know the person behind the player. Today we got TJ Finley, just transferred to West Kentucky, played at LSU, Auburn, and Texas State most recently. TJ, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I appreciate y'all for having me on, for sure. Of course, of course. We've been looking forward to this one for a minute. Um, so we know you're a Louisiana guy, and it comes up on my TikTok all the time. I don't know the account name, but he does these crawfish boils, and I just I got to know. Like our crawfish really like that in Louisiana because he Most. does these massive boils. And every time I'm like, dude, I got like, I can't have crawfish unless it's in Louisiana. Like, can nah, you nah, confirm nah. or deny that they're really like that? Bro, yes. They, you got <laughs> fried crawfish tails. You got regular crawfish. You got the crawfish that come out the head that you got a pill. You got crawfish and gumbo and etu, bro. You can eat crawfish with anything. <laughs> do you do the method? This guy does the method. He's like, you're not eating crawfish, right? And he like sucks the juice out of the head. And Bro, like, you damn near gotta crack the whole crawfish. You can't have <laughs> crawfish without cracking the whole thing and eating the juice. So even perfect segue. What is the perfect TJ Finley? If I'm visiting Louisiana, what are like the top three or four food spots that you have to hit? Like if I'm going right, to Louisiana, so wherever it is, where do you gotta go? All right. So boom, the first spot I'm gonna take you straight off the plane. We go on a place called Manchu. It's off of Claiborne Avenue in New Orleans. So we're gonna hit we're gonna hit Man too. They got the best fried chicken in America. Boom. We go there. That's so crazy. then for dinner, we got a place called Freddy's. It's a seafood spot downtown New Orleans. We're gonna we're gonna go over there. They got the best. I don't eat oysters, but they got the best oysters. They got the best catfish, shrimp, all that. Grilled, fried, whatever you want. And then see, after that, we can really go wherever you want. They got the 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 best like beignets. Manning's the Talk about um, that dude. What are you? What are your thoughts on beignets in Louisiana? Are they also bro, in the same vein as? Uh, are they real like that? Talk to bro, me. whatever food you want in Louisiana, they, they <laughs> all up there. Like I don't care what you want. You could, bro. You can want just regular fries, like French fries, bro. We got the best French fries in America. Like we got <laughs> they're the, better, we got they're better in Louisiana, bro. Yes, we got a hole in the wall spot down the road that that you can go get some fries. You be like, damn, these fries good. Like I'm <laughs> telling you. And we, we well, didn't want to That's why I got to stay away from home. I end up being 270 if I stay out there. <laughs> <laughs> and we Zion didn't, going through it right now. Yeah, literally. Dude, he, can't, he can't get it figured out. <laughs> so we were we were trying to figure out some, some really fun questions. And the one that we wanted to ask you, we didn't want to cause any problems. But for the Louisiana people out there, if you had to start bench cut, little Wayne, little Boozy, an NBA young boy, who's starting, who's getting benched, and who's getting cut. Hopefully not to ruffle feathers if you can even decide out of those three what to do. But being from Louisiana, if you're start bench cutting those three guys, what do we got? All right. I'm a, I'm a youngin, so, like, you got to put that in perspective, too. Like, I was yep. born in 02, so I'm just not turning 22 years old. So I ain't really come up listening to Wayne for real. Mm -hmm. I really came up listening to Boosie. And then it transitioned into NBA young boy, but I'm a, I'm gonna give respect where it's due. I'm gonna put Wayne first. I'm a I'm a I'm a start Wayne. I'm a bench Boosie, and I gotta cut young boy just cause like respect, respectfully like them two came first and paid away for young boy. You know what I'm saying? Now if you ask if you ask like a 17, 18 year old, they gonna start young boy for sure. But <laughs> that was the most quarterback answer yes, of all. Sir. That was just yes, like sir. that's how you get one right Dang. there, not sure. ruffle any feathers. <laughs> But let them know where the heart lies. That was that was premier. Are you like so? If you're in the pregame locker room, who's your go-to guy then? Not out of those three, but just like in general, like who's your favorite artist? What's your go-to guy before a game? Because Dave, offensive line at TCU, like we talked about, his his was Lana Del Rey to kind of bring down the vibes and make sure he locks in, which I feel like yeah. is kind of a shock when when he tells people. So, do you have like a go-to artist when you're warming up when you're getting ready to go? Yeah. So I'm a big like. I'm a big gospel guy. Like I, I listen to a lot of gospel music mm. and before the game. I like to calm down, calm my nerves. I don't really like, really like to listen to all the rah rah and all that. Now the night before the game, oh, I'm I'm on all that. Like all the <laughs> YTB Fat NBA, like Kevin Gates, all them, like everybody. But before the game, like the pregame speech, the pregame walk, all that. You know what I'm saying? When I'm walking the field, this, that, and the third, I'm I'm straight Tasha Cobb. Like I'm mm -hmm. listening. I got like four, five songs straight that I'm gonna listen to Tasha Cobb for a good thirty minutes before the game start calm my nerves down, do my prayer, and, and I'm ready to ball. So that, that's really how, how I attack the, the you know, pregame mindset. How big is faith for you? Because, I mean, I feel like that's kind of maybe an answer that would surprise a lot of people in terms because I feel like every NFL player you see, they put these highlights out of them playing an NBA young boy. And I think just as a fan, you assume that in these locker rooms before you play football, it's such a violent sport that they're trying to get up, trying to get up. But it feels like every time I talk to a player, it's like, no, I try to – try to listen to something to bring my nerves in. I feel like that's kind of a unique answer. So what, what role do you think faith plays in your life? Yeah, it's it's a huge, it's a huge role, bro. I'm not going to lie. 
and and I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and I was telling her like looking back at, at when I was coming out of high school I would have never thought that I would have ended up at Western Kentucky right mm. and you know just just seeing how everything comes back full circle so we played Western Kentucky in 2021 when I was at Auburn yeah and then we had my my old line coach Will Friend was at Auburn with me coach Bernardi was at Auburn with me and to see two year two years three three years later that we all rekindled and, and got back together at Western Kentucky is kind of you know it, it's a small world and so you know faith faith plays a lot you know when I think about stuff like that um and at the end of the day everything happens for a reason you know you don't go through something um for no reason and, and it's either to build build your character or, or God trying to test you and so you know I, I kind of get caught sometimes looking at guys that's my age or younger than me that you know has already made their 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 way to the NFL but you know I, I kind of sit back and humble myself and, and realize that you know everything that I'm going through is for a reason and and God ain't you know I, I'm not where I'm at for no reason and so I try to make an impact on whoever I need to make an impact on um at the time and and, and realize that you know when my time come I, I need to capitalize on it and and uh it, it's gonna come for sure would you say that's kind of like the mantra that you try to live your life by in terms of everything happens for a reason or is there a saying or something in your life that's really powerful to you that you try to remind yourself every day. I know for us, we do, we do a morning show every day. And our whole thing is like, just take one step forward for us, right? Like, you know how hard life can be. We're not asking to sprint or jog, just take one step forward every day. And by the end of the year, you'll be running. Um, is there something that, you know, you try to remind yourself every day, is it everything happens for a reason or is it something else? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a real big guy on sayings, but if I were to, you know, think back on how I've attacked life day to day to day, um, I would say that would be the number one thing that I would say is everything mm -hmm. happens for a reason, whether it's, you know, good, bad or or, or whatever, um, you know, and I, and I like what you guys say, take one step at a time, because that that ties into everything happening for a reason. As long as you, you know, put one one step in one foot in front of the next, um, you know, you'll always be making progress to wherever you want to be at. Yeah, 100 um, percent. Not to change gears a little bit, but good, bad, ugly. We had a funny question because, you know, we were DMing the other day and. Unfortunately, we couldn't do the interview yesterday because you had an emergency with your kids. Obviously, we were thinking about them, but we thought of a rather funny question we wanted to ask you just being a quarterback. What do you think is harder to deal with, like the infant child or a wide receiver? Because I feel like both have their drawbacks and their attitudes. So being a new father, what do you think has been harder to uh, to deal with, a, a wide receiver that's real in his head or or an infant child? I'm going I'm to keep it 100% uh, like honest with you. The hardest thing to deal with, is a receiver because <laughs> because listen check this out i was with my kids yesterday and they was a little fussy right yeah so the only thing i needed to do was put a bottle in their mouth and they and they be quiet like i ain't gotta you know what i'm saying with a receiver they want the ball yes but how do they want the ball they want the ball all right here they want the ball right here they want the ball right here if i'm running this route i want the ball right here it's just and it's always it's never good enough you know what i'm saying and and not only do they want the ball once but they want the, they want it again and they want it again and they want it again a, a baby bro I, if they crying if they fussy whatever they either want to go to sleep or they want to be fed it's only two things and so that's easy to figure out to me that's yes. my opinion but a receiver especially if you're a diva oh my lord <laughs> Dave talks, Dave talks about it all the time because I'm like, you know, I never got to play football. I have the build where if I stepped on a football field, I think my dad did did me a favor by keeping me out of it. I think I'd be snapped in half. So, I mean, as just like as a casual fan, never got to play the game. My favorite position is the wide receiver because I think it's, you know, the cool position. They make crazy plays, but Dave is always like, dude, in the locker room, nightmares. <laughs> nightmare bro <laughs> but but at the end of the day they the ones that make the plays for you so you got to deal with it yeah so, you know what i'm saying and and i've learned to you know i'm a big people person so i like i i know how to cater to to different types of receivers and i didn't had all types of guys i didn't had guys that really didn't care if they got the ball and and was amazing when they got the ball in their hands and i didn't had guys that tj if you don't give me the ball i'm i'm, I'm not gonna play like so i i didn't had uh both both sides so do you think being a quarterback, I mean, because that sounds like a really interesting situation that I don't think a lot of athletes in different sports have to go to where I feel like your job relies so heavily on other positions and other positions, especially job relies solely on your ability to do, to do your job. You said you're a people person. How do you find juggling personalities like that is? Because I feel just for myself, a gut reaction if someone was like, yo, if you don't get me this ball, I'm not going to play. I would almost be more inclined to be like, all right, then don't play. But I feel like the situation that you're in, you need guys like that sometimes. Like you need a wide receiver that's like, yo, I need the ball or I'm not playing. 
Because right. obviously, if he feels like that, hopefully his skill is up to that level. So how do you find juggling personalities like that, how hard that really is? And if you have like a method that works for you, is it just kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then going about your day or what do you think? How do you juggle that? Yeah, I said I think it, it says a lot about character, right? It, it says a lot about the patience and the, the ability to understand, um, you know, other people's point of view and, and you know, just how other people are. Um, and when you look at it, you know, just at the history of, of you know, good good quarterbacks and, and ultimately great quarterbacks, good college quarterbacks, good NFL quarterbacks, um, you know, the, the common denominator is that majority of them, you know, are good people. Like, they're good – I don't know how to say it – people, persons, persons, people, whatever, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they understand, um, you know, how to, how to connect with those type of guys um, because at the end of the day, like, like I said, like, those are the ones that that make you look good. And yes, mm -hmm. the o, the O line and the running backs helps. But you know, when you put that ball in the air, thirty you know thirty thirty five yards down the field, and that receiver just goes up and and makes a hell of a catch. Like those are the type of guys that that you need playing for you and that you want um, to have on your side. So you know, just building that chemistry, building that trust for sure. Um, you know that a uh, you know it, it just says a lot about a guy's character. You know, if he can connect with a guy that you know is is misunderstood or you know a lot of the coaches don't really want to deal with it um but you know you need them so um you know it, it's just to me it's a big character thing it, it's, it's it's how you were raised it's how you you know how you respect other guys opinions and how you respect other guys you know wants and, and needs how do you think becoming a new father has helped develop your character because i know you know every athlete every person even people in my personal life that are going through having kids are always like dude it'll it'll change your whole perspective it'll change your whole world speaking of you know, being a people's person and, you know, character development, how has being a new father kind of affected your character development? Yeah, it just, it, it showed me a lot of areas that I needed to mature in, right? I, I, mm. I, you know, when I, when I first got them, you know, they first were delivered, you know, I was a, a bit impatient and, and I'm, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, like I, I make impulse decisions, you know, at times. And, and that just comes with being a, a 21 year old father, 22 year old mm -hmm. father. Um, You know, I, I've had times and situations where I've, made some bad decisions and and you know it ultimately costed me down the line um but it just taught me patience it, it taught me unconditional love it taught me you know how to how to take care of what's mine it, it taught me um and, and it boosted a level of of responsibility you know in my head that you know I, i'm not just out here living for me like I, I can't just be making decisions for tj finley like i got two little boys that you know at the end of the day they look up to me whether they know it or not right now um that i'm trying to pave a way for them to not ha ever have to to work a nine to five, you know, a day in their life. So um, I, th I think those are the biggest things that, you know, kind of um, came over me, you know, once they got, um, you know, once they came into the world. Yeah, 100 percent. I've heard that kids can be just world changers for you, like uh, perspectives, the way you carry yourself the day to day. Um, but speaking of, you know, TJ Finley, you said you're, you know, working for them now, but we want to kind of get to know the baller TJ Finley as well. I know Dave has been itching to ask you some football questions. He w was wishing and hoping that you were going to TCU, but Western <laughs> Kentucky, we're excited to watch you next yeah. year. But I know Dave had a couple of things he wanted to ask you. Yeah. Uh, before I get on Western Kentucky, I want to take you back a little further and just uh, kind of get in your head. What was the earliest memory with you playing football? What, what was it? Honestly, uh, and I joke around with my little brother all the time. I don't remember anything from the time I was like six years old before that. Like, I don't remember nothing that happened when I was five years old, nothing happened when I was four years old. So to me, like the earliest memory was we got a little city like 35 minutes away from New Orleans called Hammond, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And that's where my grandma lived. And so that's where my mom was raised and all that. So I played bitty ball, bitty football, peewee football out here um, around the time I was like seven, eight years old. Um, and my, my uncle was my coach. His name was Ilya. And so um, that was really my earliest memory um, with them. And, and I remember us going undefeated all year until we got to the championship. Um, and we played a team called Kentwood, which is they're on the north side of, of um, New Orleans. And they came out there and, and I started crying because a kid hit me too hard. And my daddy grabbed my face mask and threw me down. And and ultimately, I, I think we came back and won like a close game or whatever. But um, that probably was the earliest memory for me. Were you a quarterback back then, I'm assuming? Yeah, I played quarterback all, all my life. And which quarterback did you look up to during that time? Did you have like an idol that you shaped your game around? Um, and did that change throughout time? Yeah, for so my so my first number ever wearing was number seven. And so my dad was a big Michael Vick fan. 
Um, mm. So I, you know, when I was smaller, I used to be a little fast. Um, so I, I used to model my game after Michael Vick, just running around, ball in one hand, just making miraculous throws out of nowhere. Um, and then as I got a little older, um, you know, being an African American guy and, and seeing a lot of guys, um, you know, my color you know, go to the league and have success and all that. It went from RG3 to Cam Newton, um, those type of guys. I, when I got to LSU, I met um, Jamarcus Russell, and, and you know, he he kind of um, influenced me in a, in a lot of ways to to not go down the same path that he went on. Um, and then as I got a little older, uh, mentally, I started to try to mo- model my game after Tom Brady, uh, Peyton, Peyton Manning, um, you know, all those type guys, just because they – they had the game won in their head before they ever even did it physically. And so, um, you know, tied in a both a, a mixture of those guys um, and still to this day, you know, I, I still try to model my game after those guys. You know, it's good. As a kid from Louisiana, I, you know, we did our research before uh, we got on the set with you. While you were at Texas State, one of the offensive analysts was Lindsey Scott, right? Another yeah. went to Zachary High, won a state championship at Zachary High, went to LSU, Mizzou, and then uh, finished his career out at UIW. And obviously, you, another Louisiana kid, starting at LSU, um, going to Auburn, Texas State, and now Western Kentucky. One, um, did you kind of get to share each other's experiences? Did you, you know, obviously some more advice from somebody that can relate coming from that background, but also what uh, did going through those experiences like teach you and to the and shape you to the TJ Finley that we see in front of us today? Yeah, so so Lindsay was a, a very big help last year, you know, um, coming into a new office that he had ran the, the year previous at UIW. Um, you know, me and him, and, and I don't think people realize this, but I didn't get to Texas State until August, and that was like a week before fall camp. So, mm-hmm. you know, that that's a testament to show you how much work that me and Lindsey put in after the, you know, after you know after film on the field and stuff like that, um, to really digest the offense and really get a good understanding to be able to go in week one and beat Baylor. Um, you know, so that was he was a big help for me. And as far as the experience part, you know, him, him being at, you know, multiple different schools and stuff like that. And, and us kind of having the same uh, story, you know, as far as being transferred and, and stuff like that, finding a place that, you know, we can go in and succeed at, um, you know, that all of that stuff. And, and with us being from Louisiana for so we, we kind of just connected from the first day we met, you know, I, I really didn't know Lindsay. He was so much older than me um, coming out of high school. And when he was at LSU and stuff, you know, I was still a little boy. So being able to connect with him, you know, as a as the TJ Finley I am today, I was able to understand everything that he went through and kind of correlate that to my story um, and, and take, you know, what he did and, and just run with it. You know, just being able to have those man to man conversations with him about when I was struggling or when he was struggling. And we, you know, we just sat down and understood each other. And, and that helped me, um, you know, it just it taught me how how much perseverance you need to really play this game, you know, and, and at the end of the day you know, the goal is to go and the goal is to get to the NFL. And so whatever, you know, whatever steps you got to take, whatever, you know, you got to go through to get there, you just got to be willing to go through it. Yeah. And as far as next step, obviously, this one being you being in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and, you know, for all the Hilltop fans out there, what are they getting from TJ Finley? A, a grown man. You know, they they getting a guy that can, that can come out there and take care of business. And, and I pride myself on you know, doing what I say I'm going to do, and, and I come to win. You know, I, I told Coach Helton from the day one that he recruited me that I'm not coming to, you know, I, I want I want to win a bowl game, yeah, but I want to get to the playoffs. You know, they they they, they made a 12-team playoff this year, and, and week one we go play Alabama. I didn't see Alabama for four years straight and, and threw for 150 yards every every time I played them, whether I was 18 or whether I was 21. And so, you know, being able to, to take that mindset – um and really understand what Coach Helton is trying to get done, Coach Friend is trying to get done, and come in and 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 do my job, you know. Um, and, and that, you know, also I, I also want to make other people better around me. Um, that's my goal too. But at the end of the day, it's about winning, you know. Now now is the time for me to submit myself into you know the, the top five, top ten quarterbacks of this next year class, and, and I'm ready to do it for sure. Let's. Well, I'm fired up. <laughs> I don't know if that. I don't know if that got anyone else going, but that just fired me up. Um, speaking of Alabama, I know our producer Josh. We actually had a question like directly about that experience. You want to go ahead? Uh, yeah. So obviously, you played for a couple of schools in the SEC. Um, two of the biggest programs in the entire country. Uh, I want to know which school brought more juice on game day. Was it Auburn or LSU? Okay, well, you got to bear with me right now because when I was at LSU, it was COVID, right? So yeah, true. It was kind of rough to be on the field. It was kind of hard to be on the field and really get the feel for how LSU fans really, truly are. 
Now, during my recruitment, I was locked into LSU the whole time, so I really didn't take many visits um, anywhere else. But I can tell you this. Auburn fans are, and I'm going to be respectful when I say this, but they are kind of sick in the head. Like, they are <laughs> they are ruthless. They are, and, and when they love you, they love you. When they hate you, they hate you. And so, you know, they're, they're pretty crazy. Um, but I would say it's about 50-50. It, you know, LSU can get like that, too. Um, you know, I remember when Les Miles was there in 18, um, and they played Florida. And that place, I think it was, I think it was Les Miles. I think that was his last year, um, or it might have been seventeen. But when LSU played Florida, and Florida came to to um, Louisiana to play, man, that probably was the best game I ever. And I was sitting in the stands in that game, so mm. that probably was the craziest atmosphere I've ever been in, other than when we went to Penn State um, in twenty one, and, and Penn State was pretty crazy too. So I actually would love to ask you a little a little bit about that because I think you know we talk about that as fans too in this house. We got a couple of people that went to Big Twelve schools, a couple of people that went to SEC schools. Talk to me about being because you know I feel like the, as these fan bases they treat you know you guys are still kids at the end of the day when you're in college, regardless of you know how many years you're there, fifth year, sixth year. It seems like a lot of the time we as fans love to treat college football players especially like they're grown men like they have everything figured out talk to you about being in an environment where you're 19 20 21 years old making mistakes in in a game right and then right. having to come off the field and have your own fan base turn on you or praise you kind of that like what have you done for me now lately how do you kind of break through that that mental because i feel like that can take a lot of guys down you right. know you have a bad game and turning on your phone and seeing especially in this era of social media there's no barrier for fans right. to be able to not get to you they can get to you any way they want now and it can be you're just checking social media to see what your buddies are up to and you got 20 dms of a fan telling you how worthless you are and then the next game telling you that you're the greatest thing on earth so how do you kind of handle that as a kid yeah it, it's kind of it's hard you know I, I struggled with it you know you know my first game at lsu i was an 18 year old guy um, you know, my first start was South Carolina after Miles Brennan had unfortunately got injured, you know, and luckily I had a good game that game. So, you know, me looking at social media was kind of, you know, claps and, 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 and appraises. So, you know, but, but the biggest thing for me, and I found out, you know, once I got to Auburn, um, the consistent thing for me was just prayer, you know, being able to come to God and, and really, um, express to him how I felt and, and stuff like that. And my family was there as well. Like my family was at every single game. They traveled to away games and home, and home games. Um, so that for me was the biggest thing. Um, and, and just knowing who you are as a, as a man, right? Just knowing who you are, um, knowing your true identity, knowing what you're at that college to do, which is, you know, ultimately impact the younger generation that's coming, you know, after you, um, you know, you, you're, you're never really concerned about what someone else has to say um, when you think about it like that, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, karma is real and, and the mm -hmm. same stuff they're going to sit there and say about you, you know, they have to realize either they have kids or they're going to have kids or someone in their family, um, you know, might end up with, in a situation, maybe not a game, maybe not, you know, they're not losing their life savings over a fan duel bet that they're placing <laughs> on a game or something like that. But it's going to be something, you know, that kid may be you know, coming out of high school and maybe looking to get a scholarship at a school and, and you know, it's just, you never know, right? And, and know. so being able to think about it like that um, and, and just knowing and understanding who you are as a person, I think that helps a lot for sure. And I feel like I got to ask you, because I feel as though, you know, you get to experience what I would put up there in sports as I think top five. Auburn, Alabama, the Iron Bowl. Just talk to me through what that is like as an experience just as a whole i mean you got to start in it you got to play in it you took right. them down to the wire i mean just like talk to me about that experience the week leading up to it what it's like being in the locker room before the iron bowl because the iron bowl takes over your entire week as a fan of college football Absolutely. like once that game is getting like real close that whole week it's iron bowl week yep. like everyone's excited for it everyone's getting up for it. it doesn't matter who you support it's auburn playing alabama and it's the iron bowl right yeah, so it's it's crazy, you know, and it's 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 something like I've never seen, you know, and and um, I thought the battle of the boot at LSU was something, you know, LSU versus Arkansas. I thought mm -hmm. LSU versus Florida was a big rivalry game until I got to Auburn and I heard all of uh, the, you know, Auburn, Alabama, um, the Iron Bowl. And so, you know, being able to start in that game and play in it, you know, was a dream come true, especially after, you know, hearing about it for the whole week. Um, you know, we, we damn near had a pep rally at Auburn, like, 
And, and it's, it's just something about Alabama. You know, no matter how bad an Auburn team is, no matter how good an, an Alabama team is, that game is – the records are 0-0. Zero, 0-0. Zero. Zero, zero. We and, talk about and, it all the time. Literally, and, that and game, it doesn't matter. The Auburn family, the, whether it's home or away, and it's really – it's really more so when it's a home game for Auburn um, that that Auburn just turns into a different team, you know. And, and we were struggling that year. We we were struggling to find our identity. We were struggling to to stop people on defense. We were struggling to score on offense. But that game, it was just like a a win just took over us, and, and we were able to move the ball. We were able to catch Alabama off guard, and and they were pretty good that year. They had Jamison Williams. They had John Mechie, you mm-hmm. know, Py, and, and all those guys. Um, and, and those guys were balling. So. You know, luckily, and I mess with my Auburn guys all the time. Luckily, J Mo got got kicked out of the game in the second quarter. Uh, <laughs> but but you know, we we gave them a run for their money, and, and we should have won that game. Um, you know, before overtime. But you know, every, like I said, everything happens for a reason. You know, maybe I would still be at Auburn to this day if if we would have won that game. So, uh, you know, it, you, you just never know, right? And, mm-hmm. and you take it for what it is, and take it to the chin, and you move on. Talk to me a little bit about, because I've always wondered in a game like that, do you ever just take a minute, whether it's pre-snap, pre-game, just to like drink in an environment like that? Or is it one of those things where I feel as though athletes almost in today's day and age, it's like, I just need to lock into the point where it's almost like I black out. I don't know what the fans were doing. I don't know what they were saying. I'm just so locked in on the game. But I know as a fan, like there are just moments where you wish you were on this field just drinking in the energy and the environment. Like, were there ever moments in a game like that where pre-snap you're just like, holy, holy shit, this is insane? <laughs> yeah, for me, it's, it's always uh, pre-game. It's always, you know, running out the tunnel, you know, right before you get ready to start, you know, and embracing the, the the energy within the stadium, right? Just being able to, to see all the fans, the smiles on their faces, everybody calling your name. You got kids with your jerseys on and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff. Being able to just see that and embrace that. And, and at the end of the day, that, that, that puts a reminder in your head that you're out there to have fun. You know, you're out there to, to you know, ultimately the, the goal is to win the game, but at the end of the day, you're having fun, you, you know, doing something that you love to do. Um, it's just like an accountant going to work and, and him him looking at his bank account and he got a bunch of money in there because he's been doing his job, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just like that. And, and for us as athletes, you know, um, yes, it's a bigger stage and a lot more at stake, um, you know, with our livelihoods, but at the end of the day, we're just kids out there having fun um, and, and being able to embrace that and and have coaches on the sideline that understand that, um, you know, is a game changer. I couldn't agree more. Just kids having fun. Like, I feel like if we forget that just like as fans, I don't know why I'm looking at Dave. He played the sport, but like, I just feel like that's just like a great way to put it. Um, yeah. Josh, you have one before we get to our fun game. Yeah. You, you had another one that you want to ask? I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. All right. So TJ, we want to play a fun game. I want to give you three scenarios and we just want to see what your call would be. Ever. Just just the true ballers test is what we're going to call this one. Let's do it. All right, so you got three game scenarios. I just want to see what you're called, be. All right, we got the game opener. How are we starting the game? Are we taking the top off? If TJ Finley's in charge, we're starting the game. Game opener, first drive, what are we doing? Excuse my language, but fucking right. <laughs> like, and, and and if I'm being honest with you, we I've, I've had enough of the, you know, let's run the ball first and second down just to see what the – no, let, let's – Let's yeah. get in, in 10 personnel. Let's run four verticals and let's see if these DBs can cover in real life. And, and pop that, if, if, it's, if, if, if it's not there, I'm checking it down to my running back. And, or if they give us a five man box, I'm checking inside zone and, and we'll live with the four yard game. And then second down, we're going to take another shot. <laughs> Dude, I love that. You take the fucking top off. Absolutely. All right. Fourth and three at your opponent's 30 and coach lets you call it. What are we doing? Fourth quarter. Fourth and three, Ooh. your opponent's 30, just outside of field goal range. What are we doing? Okay, so we're going to go FIB. We're going to go right hash. We're going to go FIB. I got two receivers on my on my right. I got a receiver on my left. We're in 11P. I got a tight end. Um, I got a tight end. We, we, we I'm going to call it twins, right? Twins left. I got two receivers on my right. Right hash. Picture this with me. Mm-hmm. I got my tight end. We're going to short motion him to the, from the left side of the – he's on, he's he's right behind the left tackle. Yep. He's going to short motion to the right ta- the right tackle. We're gonna run double post. We're gonna run wheel with the with the uh, the tight end. We're gonna heavy play action, right? So let's say inside zone to the right. So we're we're acing to the wheel backer, leaving the mic for the backside tackle and the backside guard. We're gonna heavy play action. I got a dig on the backside just in case they give me free access, or we can put a slant, you know, just in case they want to bring uh, field mm-hmm. pressure. Heavy play action. Get all the linebackers to step up. I'm going one to the deep post, two to the wheel. If it's cover three or cover two where the the corner is sitting. I want my tight end to just stop at the at the um, first down marker, and I'll back show it first down every time. That's, that's good. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was, that was literally amazing. Also, what for people out there, FIB means formation and boundary. Absolutely. The reason he's bringing that tight end in motion is so that it allows him to read the defense and then know which one of them is going by. He really wants to post. That's why he's not saying right now. He really, <laughs> look at him. He really wants to post. He really wants to post, and I love hey, that. Because, because in the SEC, fourth and three, they still in quarters. Oh, yeah. So if that, if that safety come down with that first post, that big boy post over the top wide open Easy. and if they Take don't it. that backer he's so he's so it's fourth and three so the backers are thinking oh they might run the ball heavy play action to get them to step up now i'm painted on the back shoulder of the tight end first down gone slinging gone slinging yeah. that thing that all right hard. last got, one got brock bowers up the sideline for, for seven yeah, <laughs> let's, go. let's go in las vegas next year all right fourth quarter we're third and goal in the red zone and we need a touchdown what's the tj finley call we're we're in the huddle it's like tj we need to get one right now fourth and goal for, fourth and goal. Okay, yeah. so now we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We can go right hash, left hash, whatever. We're we're in a, a ten a ten p personnel, or we can go eleven p and put the tight end at number three, right? So we got we are, it's let's say we're, we're left hash again. So I got my X to my left. I got my Y, my H, and my Z to my right, right? So we got the starting from inside out on my X. I'm gonna have just a fade ball, right? I got whatever. I got you know a grown man over there. We might just take a chance. That might be my third down call, just to throw the fade. But if we're in fourth down right here, we're gonna go. My Y is, on, is number three, right? He's gonna run uh, what we call a pivot route, which is a whip route, right? We're gonna call him. He got the whip route. He's my check down, just in case the guy's over the top isn't open, right? So my number two guy, which is my H, he's gonna run a sit wheel. So he's gonna boom. He's gonna run five yards, sit, and he's gonna show me his numbers, and then he's gonna wheel to the back pile line. Over on the outside, my Z, he has the post, right? So he's trying to collect two. I want him, if if we have a, a press corner, which would be great right here, he's going to collect that that corner and that safety over the top that's supposed to be guarding, um, it, let's say, you know, they're in one, two high. Let's, let's, let's just go two man, yeah, right? Yeah. He has the deep half. As soon as he see that 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 post cross his face, his eyes going there, right? Yeah, so I, now I'm going, I'm going one to the sit wheel, two to the pivot, and three, hell, I'm just I'm just making something happen with my legs if it's not there. <laughs> making something happen. That is, you get three yards. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and then if that corner is not disciplined on that sit go, he's gonna be right where the fuck open. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, and I think our last question. I mean, that was. You want to be the that was, certified stamp? I mean, that was beautiful. That, <laughs> that was, was, I mean, that was, yeah, that was literally. That's, a, that's a quarterback. That's a quarterback right there. Well that literally that felt like I was in school for a second. That was, <laughs> but it was like a class that I wanted to pay attention to. Um, we talked about it a little bit before we got on here, and I think just to kind of wrap everything up, put a bow on it, we felt like this would be, you know, the perfect question. We're going to Western Kentucky. They've got quite a reputation for letting that thing go. Right. Gunslinger offense, let that thing go. Western Kentucky quarterbacks have combined for 133 passing touchdowns in the last three years. Mm -hmm. For all of our Hilltopper fans out there, is TJ Finley excited to step up and just let that thing go all year? Absolutely. I'm going to watch my language on that one. Absolutely. I, I, I honestly and genuinely cannot wait to get out there uh, with the mindset that I have right now, the 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 physical, um, you know, the way I'm in shape, the way my body feels, um, the, the weapons that we have around me, the defense that we have, the head mm -hmm. coach that we have. We have all the pieces we need to make a run uh, um, this year, and whether we go to Alabama and win or not, um, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna show Alabama that you know this ain't no this ain't the regular can you know Western Kentucky that you just gonna roll over and, and do anything like that. It's a whole new ball club. Um, Alabama has a whole new ball club that people have to take into consideration that they might not be who they who they think they might be. Mm. Uh, and, and and as uh, what's your, what's your boy on TikTok say, will it blitz Bama blitz? And we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they changed the narrative. They got to see you guys this year. You know what I mean? It's how you guys exactly. got to see them. They got to see Absolutely. Western Kentucky this year. Absolutely. Let's go. Well, thank you so much for coming on, TJ. We really appreciate it. Um, we can't wait to watch you play this year. We were so excited for this. Um, we're definitely going to try to make it out to a Western Kentucky game. But, um, I mean, we just literally cannot wait to see you in that offense. I mean, that, absolutely for everyone out here. I mean, I, you in a position where it's just let that thing go and let it go often, I think is going to yep. be electricity for not only Hilltopper fans, sports fans, but just like America in general. Absolutely. It's going to be beautiful. And again, like you, you say to yourself, God's timing is always right. Right. And there's, a, uh, there's a reason why you're at Western Kentucky now. Now it's just time to go. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you guys for having me on. Whenever y'all come out there to West Kentucky, everything on me. So just let me know.
Let's do Absolutely. it. Let's do it. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you, TJ. Absolutely. Sure.